Okay, take two. Um, so I'm using Screencast-O-Matic, and that's a free download. And it can't be longer than 15 minutes. And I don't know if that's why it deleted my last baby bath demonstration. So I'm going to turn my timer on here. So I'm going to make sure I don't go over 15 minutes. I have my timer set for 14. Um, so and really I was at like 15.2. So I don't know if I just didn't save it the right way. Whatever. I have to do it again. So I'm going to show you how to do a baby bath. And you are going to do a baby bath for your course. So normally in week one or week two, students will just go into the video screening rooms and the validation rooms, and they will record a baby bath demonstration. And then I watch all of those. <coughs> Excuse me. So you still are responsible for doing that. So you might find a doll, you might find a stuffed animal, have someone video record you, and you're going to demonstrate a baby bath um, demonstration as if you would be showing a first-time mother and father how to give that baby bath. So we'll be doing a sponge bath. We don't immerse the baby until that umbilical cord falls off about day five, day 14. And then, uh, so in the meantime, we'll just wash around the umbilicus. Some research is saying that you can give, um, give the baby a bath, but until the policy and procedures change, we're just going to continue to do a sponge bath. In order to do your newborn bath, the baby's temperature has to be over 98.4 axillary. If you ever get a temperature that's over 97.6 axillary when you're on the clinical, come grab me and let's take that temperature again together. I'm not saying that it's that you're doing anything wrong, but maybe you just don't have that arm tight enough on that um, temp probe. So um, I'll help you and we'll determine if this baby is at 98.4. They usually wait till about four, no, 48 hours, whoa, 24 hours until they give the baby bath. That way, if you remember from the newborn audio, they have the, that vernix, that nat, it's a natural emollient, acts as an anti, um, antimicrobial, so that's good for this baby. So we delay bathing, and then at 24 hours, by then their temperature is a little more regulated. So as I demonstrate a baby bath, I'm also going to show you how to do a newborn assessment, but you don't need to show the parents that. So for my baby bath, I have a towel. So what you'll do is you'll take two towels, washcloth, and a couple baby blankets, and you're going to put those in the warmer that's in the supply room. And there's also a small warmer in the nursery, so you're probably better off in the supply room. You're going to warm your blankets first, and then you'll give your baby bath. So your baby is to stay completely covered the whole time they're giving you're giving this bath so their temperature doesn't dip down. So we have our warm towels and washcloths and blankets. I have my little bowl here, which um, every patient has. And I have my bath soap, which is in the yellow. There is this a little different brand. And then I have what's called a bath buddy. So a bath buddy is something the parents can go home with. This one already has expired. So when you put the bath buddy into your water, it'll tell you if your water's at the right temperature. So it'll either say um, cool, okay, or too hot. So obviously we want it to be at okay. So the parents can go home with that bath buddy and use it until it expires. So we have our nice temperature water here and I'm wearing gloves the whole time. So I'm gonna put this warm towel underneath my baby and I wouldn't hold the baby just with one hand like that. And I'm going to keep them bundled so they're nice and warm. So we're going to start with our head. So when you're doing your assessment, you're going to assess the anterior fontanelle. That should be soft and flat. That's that diamond-shaped fontanelle. The posterior fontanelle is in the back, and that might only be fingertip. And sometimes you'll have the sutures are overriding. And that's okay, that's just part of that molding. They overrid in order to fit through that vir virginal, oh geez, vaginal canal. So um, that, that will return to normal in a few days. You're going to look at the eyes, make sure the sclera, there's no, it's, there's no jaundice, there's no subconjunctival hemorrhages. So just the process of a vaginal birth, the baby may have popped some blood vessels in their eyes, that'll go away, that's not a, no, no treatment. 
You want to make sure there's no drainage from their eyes. Occasionally that erythromycin ointment that we put in to prevent chlamydia and gonorrhea could cause some irritation. So the other thing you want to do is to go from the inner canthus to the top of the ear and make an imaginary line and they should be fairly even. So from the inner canthus to the top of the ear. If the ears are low, that could mean this baby has a chromosomal abnormality. You can look in the mouth and make sure you don't see any of those Epstein pearls. Those are those calcium deposits. Make sure they're moving their face symmetrically with their ears you can, and make sure they have good recoil with that ear. So just kind of pull them back and they should recoil back. So if we start our bath with the face, we're just going to use clear water, no soap. You're gonna make a bath mitt. Remember that from CNA? Um, in the hospital, we don't have baby washcloths, we don't have disposable washcloths, so we're going to make a bath mitt to prevent infection. We have clear water only in our little bowl, and we're going to start at the inner canthus of one eye, go to the out, use a different part of your washcloth, inner canthus, go out, rinse our washcloth, and then pat and get the rest of the face. Remember, we're patting, we don't want to harm this epidermis, it's very thin. Now we did our face, we're gonna add our soap. So we're gonna add our soap to our water. Now we're gonna do our head. Parents don't need to worry about that anterior font now. They're not gonna harm their baby, they can wash their hair. So we're gonna have soapy water. We're gonna pat, 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 and maybe a gentle rub. And the babies have brushes and combs. So if they have, uh, you have a baby with a lot of hair, you might have to use a little comb to get some of that out. If you don't get all the blood off or all the vernix off, don't worry, the next bath that will be accomplished. A baby needs a bath maybe every two days, not more often than that, because their skin will, they, they'll just dry out. So we don't need to give them a bath that often. If they have a bad diaper and you have to give them a bath, fine, there's no, um, firm rule about that, but every other day. So now you're going to do the arms and the trunk. And again, we're going to keep this baby warm. So we'll fix our bath fit. Underneath the neck is where a lot of that vernix is going to accumulate. Again, if there's too much and you can't get it off, leave it on. In the creases and the axillary and the elbow, there might be vernix. So pat, pat, get our next arm, axillary, creases, hands, and then we'll get our trunk, including the abdomen, staying away from our umbilical cord. So now I'm just gonna roll my baby over and I'm gonna get the back. And when you're doing the back, make sure that the spine is intact and there's no dimpling in the crease there. And then we're gonna go back. So prior to giving your bath, if you're doing your assessment, you wanna listen to this baby's heart rate and listen to their respiratory rate. So I would do that before I even took my temperature. Once you start stimulating this baby, they're gonna cry and then it's gonna be more difficult for you. So you're gonna to listen to your apical pulse for a full minute. And then on the right side, I would suggest you start with your, to listen for your respirations, because that heart is so big in comparison to the rest of their chest, you're just gonna hear heart sounds. So you're gonna listen for a full minute for the respiratory rate. While your stethoscope is in your ears, listen for bowel sounds. So we did our head, and we did our trunk, and we did our arms. We're gonna keep this baby warm. So I have an additional towel and we're gonna kind of wrap them up here. We're gonna keep them nice and warm. So now we're gonna to go to the lower extremities. And while I get my water, you're gonna make sure this baby has five fingers, five toes. Sometimes, well, I guess it would be 10, right? Five on each hand, five on each foot. Sometimes if they have an extra digit dangling here, um, they might just need to tie that off with suture if there's bone in it then they would have to be referred on maybe to a plastics or to an orthopedic. So now we're gonna do our legs. So again, in the creases, we might have more vernix. We wanna make sure we've got five toes on each foot. 
and then on the soles of our feet if it's a term baby we should have two-thirds of the soles should have creases <coughs> one thing i forgot too is with the palms of the hands you want to look at those hands to make sure there's multiple creases not one single crease across which is called a simian crease and that could indicate down syndrome and my diaper from the lab just broke okay i think i have an extra one here so now we're going to get our diaper area i have a little male here so right now he's uncircumcised so with an uncircumcised boy if you're not going to circumcise the patient the mother still needs to clean that penis so she can pull down the foreskin a little bit clean and then pull back the foreskin um, that foreskin doesn't truly retract until the little boy is about three years of age and you wouldn't take this long because he would pee on you so you're going to clean him with the scrotum you're wearing gloves you can palpate to see if both testes are down um, they should be down by about 36 weeks they start to descend so palpate for those testes in a female the labia should be covering the clitoris um, if they're preterm it might be open you might see some a discharge and that's called pseudo menstruation and that's just a result of hormone um, withdrawal the diapers have a stripe down the middle and so if this baby voids then that stripe turns kind of a blue green teal color not to insult you but to put the diaper on the tabs go in the back And you want your diaper to be nice and secure below the umbilicus because we want that umbilical cord to dry and we don't want it to get caught on the um, cord clamp either so we have our diaper on we've got done our full bath we've done our assessment by checking the fontanelles looking in the eyes making sure the face was symmetrical listening to heart lungs abdomen abdomen soft we checked our simian crease for a simian crease. Um, our arms are moving and our legs are symmetrical. And now we're going to ask the mom if they would like to do skin to skin. So skin to skin really is the best option after a bath. But if they don't want to do that, then we would go ahead and just get them dressed and we'd want them nice and warm. Um, the hospital does offer hats. Um, so you would just pick out a clean hat for your baby. Sorry, I'm tossing this baby around. Um, you wouldn't do that. So the parents can put the babies in their own clothing if they want. That's totally up to them. So we want them to be warm after their bath. So after our bath, we're gonna keep our baby on their back to sleep. We wanna reduce the risk of SIDS studies have shown that babies who were dying and so dying of SIDS were um, on their abdomens so we would put a hat on this baby I don't have a hat and now we're going to put our blankets on so you make a diamond shape with your blankets again I don't mean to insult you if some of you have children already so we're going to make a diamond shape Put our baby at the top of the diamond then we're going to wrap them a little bit like a burrito one side over the bottom of the burrito comes up and then over i've got her double him he's in a double blanket because he just had his bath you want your swaddle here to be loose so it's not a very tight burrito they found that babies who were in that tight swaddle couldn't move their legs and have act, that activity and that caused hip dysplasia and then we would put a clean hat on this baby that's my timer so that's 14 minutes the other thing real quick I want to tell you is SIDS back to sleep nothing else should be in this bassinet no stuffed animals um, nothing that the baby could asphyxiate on